Hi, Jan here. This will be the second video of the Fantasy Map series and today we are talking about wind. Before we start, I want to tell you that you may want to watch all the videos before you create your own fantasy map because things that we are going to discuss in later videos will affect things in this video. The first thing we are going to look at is pressure and density of air. So we have cold environments and we have warm environments. Within cold environments we have cold air and in warm environments we have warm air. Cold air is denser than warm air and therefore cold air will try to get to the center of gravity which would be the core of the earth but it is stopped by the surface of the earth. And at those places a high pressure area is created which is shown with an H. And the opposite happens in a warm environment. Within a warm environment the air is not dense, it is warm and it needs a lot of space and therefore it's less dense than cold air and it rises away from the center of gravity which is called a low pressure area and is shown with an L. What happens to the warm air in the upper atmosphere is it cools down and will flow towards the pole. And what happens at the surface is that the air on the high pressure area tries to get to the low pressure area to compensate the pressure. So we have a planet and on this planet we have latitudes. We have the equator shown red in the middle. So then we have one step outwards the 30 degree latitude and one step further we have the 60 degree latitude. And it makes sense that it's chosen this way but you will see why. During March and September or autumn and spring the sun will have the strongest effect on the equator. But as the earth turns around the sun with a tilt during June the northern hemisphere has summer which means that the sun will shine at the 30 degrees latitude. And the opposite happens on the summer on the south or during December and that is that the sun will have its main path around the 30 degrees latitude. But for the start we keep it simple and we look around March and September when the sun shines to the equator. As the sun rays hit the earth during March and September at the equator and it has the highest power on the equator at that time we can expect a very extreme low pressure area at the equator. And as water cools or heats slower than the land mass does, we can expect to have a high pressure area within the water around the 30 degree latitude. There are reasons why they are at the 30 degrees latitude, but we're going to learn this later on. Now the air tries to get from the high pressure area to the low pressure area. And what happens then is called the Coriolis effect and that is what we look at next. Let's imagine we have a green point that is on a circle that rotates around its own center and we have a turquoise point that is closer to the center of the rotation. As the circle rotates around its center the turquoise point will cover a rather small distance compared to the distance that the green point will cover. As they both cover the distance at the same time the green point has a much higher speed than the turquoise point. When we now transfer it to a world map it would look something like this. We have a cloud for instance that is near the equator and we have a cloud that is near the pole that is nearly the same distance as the two points and as you can see the cloud near the equator has to cover a larger distance and therefore the cloud near the equator has a much higher speed than the cloud that is near the pole. Let's say we have a low pressure area near the equator and near the 60 degrees latitude and a high pressure area near the 30 degrees latitude. And there are clouds created at the high pressure area. As the earth rotates towards the east it generates speed and the arrows show the speed at the certain latitude. So at the equator you have a large arrow because the speed is high and at the other latitudes the speed becomes lower. Everything on the surface of the earth will rotate with the speed of the earth rotation. So when you have a person that is at the north pole it won't rotate as fast as a person at the equator. And the same is true for our clouds. The clouds are created with the same speed as the earth rotation at the place where they are created. So now the cloud that is closer to the equator tries to get from the high pressure 
to the low pressure because it is blown by a wind. By the law of inertia, the cloud and the wind keep the speed of the place of their creation. What happens, the wind and the cloud have the same speed, but the earth rotates faster underneath it. So it seems for a person that stands on the land as if the wind would blow from the east to the west, but actually the wind blows towards the east as well, but as it's slower than your rotation through it, it seems like it goes to the east, I'm sorry, to the west. And something similar happens to the cloud that is closer to the 60 degrees latitude. It will try to go to the low pressure area there. And while this happens, it has the same speed of its creation and the earth turns slower beneath it than the speed of itself. And therefore the wind goes towards the east. I think you can remember the map that I made last video. So what you can see, I changed it a little bit. So I made a darker water underneath the land. So it pops more. And I've created an east and an west because I always confuse those both. And maybe I've already done it within the video. Um, yeah. So we also have the latitudes again. We have the equator, we have the 30 degrees latitude and the 60 degrees latitude. So at the equator we have the intercontinental something zone. Intertropical convergence zone. Jesus. The name is not that important, but the names of the others are important because we have the subtropical height. And they are called this way because high pressure areas are created around those latitudes. And we have the subpolar low and it's called this way because we have a low pressure area created around this zones. Let's say we have summer in the southern hemisphere and therefore we have a lot of sun rays around the 30 degrees latitude or the southern subtropical high and we are now looking where pressure zones are created we always have high pressure zones at the poles because the sun doesn't shine there a lot so we have an extreme high pressure zone and a less extreme high pressure zone around the pole and then we have some extreme high pressure areas around where winter is on the land because we know that water cools and heats slower than the land and in general around the subtropical high there will be a less extreme high pressure zone that is largely created by the cold winds that are created and blown from the land above the water. And then you can also see at the subtropical high in the southern hemisphere we have some larger high pressure areas within the water because the land heated around the water but the water still is cool and they form on the east of the ocean or west from the land and that is because of ocean currents and we're going to look at ocean currents within the next video. So let's look at low pressure areas. We have one very long low pressure area at the 60 degrees latitude. This happens on this map only on the south and won't happen during summer on the northern hemisphere because there is not a lot of land to stop the water flow or the wind flow. So therefore on this latitude you have an extreme water flow and an extreme wind flow. Around the extreme low pressure area we have a less extreme pressure area and we have two extreme pressure areas around the 60 degrees latitude on the northern hemisphere. And what you can see is they are west of the ocean or east of the landmass, so opposite to the subtropical heights. And we also have around the equator towards the 30 degrees latitude a heated land mass. So we have wind flowing from this extreme high towards this extreme low. But what happens is that the wind will be deflected partially a bit by the mountains but also by the Coriolis effect. So the Coriolis effect drags the wind towards the west but the wind wants to go to the east where the low pressure is and therefore two forces affect the wind and 
pulls it in two directions at the same time. So we have a different flow pattern than we would expect. So I also quickly drawn you a picture from how it would look like when you have summer on the northern hemisphere and winter on the southern hemisphere. And I have drawn a picture for spring and autumn, so when the sun is at the equator. So you can look at it and you can think about how it would look at your world. So let's summarize. A high pressure area is created where it's cold and the low pressure area is created where it's hot. High pressure areas are often created at the subtropical height or 30 degrees latitude. Low pressure areas are created at a 60 degrees latitude or subpolar low and on the equator. On the large land masses during winter you have an extrema high and during summer you have an extrema low. When you don't have land masses on a latitude the whole latitude will have a low or an high and it has extreme winds that only blow towards one direction and therefore also extreme water flows. And also high pressure areas are created by ocean currents east of an ocean or west of a continent and low pressure areas are created west of a ocean and east of a continent. So I have made a map that shows the easy way to make a wind map and I have also made a map how it actually would look like but this map is only during summer on the southern hemisphere. So if you don't want to make it too complicated you can choose the easy way or you can make when you want to go badass to make a wind map for each month of the year or anything like that and things like those make your fantasy world special to all the other fantasy worlds when you just have the east winds and the west winds because you know exactly where more extreme wind is blowing or how trade routes would be created because they need the wind within their back and so on. I look at it like this. When you have fun with doing all of this and you want to create the perfect fantasy map or whatever, I think it's great to do all of the extra work and have all of the stuff thought out. And I'm very interested in such maps. But if you just want to have a fantasy map for a role-playing game just to get started or things like that, most people won't really care about it. They will think it's great when you have put a lot of work within your fantasy map and your fantasy world and thought about all of it, but it's not necessary. I personally love to be very detailed about everything in my fantasy world because I want to have everything perfect in place. When you make a map like this, everything on the top will be shrunk and therefore it can be look a little bit off when you draw it on a 2D map. And that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you have learned something and we see us in the next one.